Aloha and welcome to another episode of Stay at Home Blues and Oranges brought to you by After School All Stars Hawaii. My name is Mrs. Tosa Lobendon and I am the site coordinator at Kalaakau Middle School. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, follow, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our new videos. Please also follow at All Stars Hawaii on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to connect with us. Are you guys bored at home with nothing to do? That's okay, because All Stars got you. Today, we are going to be making a mini foosball table out of a shoebox, guys. So the best thing about this project is that all of the items that you need in order to create your foosball table can be found in and around your house. So we're going to go over the list of things that you need, and then we will get into our project. And the first item on our list is a box. I use a shoe box. Um, and I already cut the lid off. You can use any box, but again, this was the box I had. The second item on our list are twigs. I actually had to go outside to get these. Um, and I cut them down to size and also shaved them just so they're a little bit smoother for when we play. The third item on our list is a Nerf dart. And you will actually need eight of these. These will serve as the handles on your arms for your game. The fourth item is a clothespin. I actually have them colored already, um, and they will serve as your players on your field. The next item that you're going to need is glue. We are using the glue to glue on the handles to the sticks. The next item on our list is a mini measuring tape to make sure that our math is correct. The next item is a good pair of scissors. Please be careful. The next item on our list is a Sharpie. You can also use a pencil or a pen if you do not have. I also have, again, my orange and blue marker. This is used to color your players. And the last item on our list is a green piece of paper, although you do not need to have a green piece of paper. Any color will do. Um, you can decorate it with your family name or your favorite things, um, but this will be used as the field at the bottom of your box. All right, guys, let's get started on our foosball table. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to take our box, we're going to take off the lid that I already cut off, and we're going to put that on the side. You will need to use the box if you do not have any clothespins for your players. So the first thing that you need to make sure that you have done is the measurements. This is going to determine how many arms you can have in your box and how many players you're going to need. So what I did, because I am using the clothespins as my players, I measured from the corners of the boxes out so that I knew how many arms I could make. So the first thing that we're gonna do is that. I'm gonna take my marker, I'm gonna take my clothespin, and I'm not gonna measure from this part to here, I'm gonna measure from the hole because that is where the player is going to rest on the stick. So we don't need to measure the whole thing, we just need to measure from the eye of the clothespin. So I'm gonna take the eye of the clothespin, I'm going to line it up with the edge of the box and I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark maybe like a centimeter after the end of the clothespin just so that I know that there's enough clearance so I can spin it all the way around. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to line up the eye hole with the end of the corner and I'm going to make my mark right at the end. All right, then I'm going to follow and make another one. So I'm gonna take my clothespin again. I'm gonna line it up with the center dot, what I just marked on my box, and I'm going to mark right at the end. Then I'm gonna go over to the opposite side just so that I know I have enough clearance for both sides. I'm going to take my clothespin and I'm going to line it up. And that's pretty much all I'm going to be able to fit on my box. So we are going to have a total of two arms um, with three players on each clothespin. The second step is that we need to make a horizontal dot on our box so that we know where our arms are going to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my player. I'm going to take a stick. It doesn't matter what stick at this point. I'm going to attach my player to my stick and then I'm going to go to the side of my box and what you really want to make sure that you're doing is you're leaving enough clearance space so that your player doesn't hit the bottom of the box. It's very important because if you do hit the bottom of the box it's going to be not fun. Okay, So I'm going to line my dot up and I'm going to again give myself maybe about a half inch on the bottom just so that 
I'm not hitting the bottom of the box. And I'm going to leave a little mark right there. So that is where I'm gonna poke my hole through for my stick to go. And I'm going to do that three more times on the saw. Now I'm just gonna hold the box like this and I'm going to kind of just, again, follow the marks on my box. A little dot, making sure I'm keeping it as straight as possible. And I'm just following the initial lines that I already put on the box. Okay, now I'm gonna flip my box over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I've already pre-marked the lines on my box and I'm just going to copy them to the back side so that everything is uniform. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm gonna take my stick, measure about a half, half an inch from the base and just follow my four lines across. Now, if you notice that when you are actually playing the game, the sticks are a little off. The best part about cardboard is it is pretty manipulatable. So all you have to do is just kind of push it or pull it. Um, and if for some reason something doesn't go right, you can just take it out and re your box. All right. So the next step is we are actually going to be drawing on our goalies on both sides, and then we're going to also cut them out. So my measurements for my goalie, let's take our measurements we are going to do three inches by two inches and we're going to make a rectangle so i'm going to take my three inches and again you can use a ruler it doesn't have to be fancy like this i'm going to mark my markings three one and then i'm going to go up by two i'm going to line it up with the line i made Move it over to the other side. Use my math skills, because we can math. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. Try to make it as center as possible so that you're not cheating. Oh, this is a little difficult, guys. Three. And then two up. Move it over two inches. So now I have a three by two box and I'm going to connect the dots down and across. And same thing on this side, down and across. And these are going to be our goalie holes. So now I'm going to cut. This is very important. You guys need to be very careful. Just because it's thin cardboard doesn't mean that you can't hurt yourself. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start by trying to make an incision. Awesome, I got it on the bottom of my box. And if you go out in an angle, it's a little bit easier for you to get in. I cut across the side. Now I'm gonna go up a little bit go across the top again please be careful make sure that you are watching out for your fingers if it will go there we go and then ah, things are falling guys I'm gonna go down and then now that I've got my piece out across That's okay, we're gonna cut the inside too. There are two layers to this box, guys. Oh my lord. Okay, all right. Sneaky box, she got me, guys. That's why it was so hard to cut because it was like three layers. All right, bam, 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 bam. Goodness, all right. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. This side only, oh, this side does have two layers. Okay, all right, be careful. We're going in. All right, so I made my cut. I'm going up. Did I get two this time? I think I cut both layers this time, guys. 
great. We are going to go across again. Please be careful. Oh. There we go. Please be careful because you want to have all your fingers so you can play or you're not going to be able to play. Why is this so difficult? There we go. And then down and across. You gotta do it again because it's a double layer. So this is playing games today, guys. Oh look. I did cut through it. Haha! -ha. Alright. So now we have our two holes. Perfect. I'm gonna use this cardboard on the side just because we might need it again. You never know. All right, and we are done with the third step. So the next step is we are actually going to be cutting the grass for our field for the bottom of our box. So, little tricky math here. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking your box, you're gonna be putting your paper long ways that way. You're going to take your box, and you're going to stand up to do this. Trace across the bottom. I'm going to trace it like that. And now you're going to have two pieces. I'm going to take my scissors. Again, please be careful. And I'm going to cut as straight as possible across my paper to create my fill. The next step, you're going to have this leftover piece of grass because this actually doesn't cover the hole. So you are going to take your paper and your box again you're going to be laying it the same way but this time you're going to go down across the side gonna take my box again take my piece of paper and again i am cutting down. that way you are eliminating paper waste and again we can use this for later if we need to and now i have two pieces of paper that are going to line the bottom of my box. So I'm going to take my Elmer's glue, okay, and I'm going to just put some ziggy zags of glue everywhere. Right. If you need more, feel free. Then we are going to take our piece of paper and we are going to push it down into our box without getting glue all over our fingers because that's what adults do. <laughs> I just got glue all over my hands, guys. I'm gonna take the second piece and do the same thing and push it up. Oh, there's a little bit of a gap. There we go. All right. Ah. Okay, guys. And now we have our field. They're playing on a famous field. Okay, all right. So the next step that we are going to do is we are now going to be popping the holes into the sides of the wall so our sticks can go through. This does require you to use your scissors. So it is recommended that you have parental help um, or supervision just so that you make sure that you're doing it right and you're not forcing the scissors through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the box on its side. I'm going to take the scissors. I'm going to hold the bottom of the scissor firmly with my hand. I'm going to hold the side wall of the box but not underneath where I'm pushing through because we don't want to push through our fingers. And I'm going to very carefully just twist. That's it. And make a hole. Okay. All right, so now that we have punched all the holes in our box, you can see on both sides, we are now going to take our sticks. So you should have four sticks. Again, depending on how many you have, you can have up to six, up to eight. It just depends on how big your box is. So I'm going to take my four sticks. And I am going to make sure that they're as straight as possible. 
Um, with these sticks, you can do a little bit of bending, which is awesome. Um, so I'm going to take my sticks and I'm going to this way, start poking them through the hole. So what we did is we measured our sticks. Um, you want to have about two inches, two to three inches on each side so that you can hold and twist. Um, also so that you can add your handles onto the end. Um, when we measured, we measured these sticks out to be 17 inches long. So anywhere from 17 um, to about two to three inches off of what your box would be. So if your box is 23 inches, you want to add two to three inches on each side. So 23 plus six would be 29. Same thing with the next sticks. We're going to push them through. Make sure that they are even. Make sure that they are level. They want to rest on the same plane or same horizon. Gonna push our third stick through. Again, please be careful with your fingers. And our last stick. If you notice that your stick is too big, your hole is not wide enough, again, you can just take your scissors um, and kind of just twist back and forth very carefully until you open the hole a little bit longer. All right, so now that we have all four of our arms in to our box, we are going to start with our players. So if you do not have closed pins, another option for us is using the lid of our box. So what I did is I cut a three inch strip, three inch by one inch or a little less than an inch strip. And I origamied it into a player. So I will show you how to do that. I traced out a notch, which is the square in the center. And then I traced about how big the notch was, another little small gap on either side. What you're going to do is you are going to just cut on the trace lines. This is actually really easy and it's a great way to learn how to create items um, if they have like a hole or there's something that needs to be attached to it, you don't have tape or glue, this is a perfect way to learn how to put items together. So I'm gonna fold the gap in half, that way I don't have to cut anywhere else except for the slits. So I'm going to cut right on the lines. Again, being careful of my fingers. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to go in to the gap with my scissor very carefully. And then I'm going to cut that gap. Okay, got one, two, three and then four. So now I have a hole and I have a square. What you're going to do is you're gonna to wanna to try to round the bottom with your finger, just pushing it down so that it becomes a circle. And then you're going to take your cardboard and you're going to push it through the hole. That creates a seal. And then you're going to push that little knob that you made in the back you just push it down and now it's stuck in that position and you can actually put it on your stick. I have the other one for show. And these can be your players. They twist, they don't move, and you can make as many as you want in the box. That is just if you don't have close pins. All right, so I'm gonna put my stick back in my box. And we are going to get onto our clothespin players. So ideally, what you want for your foosball table, for those of you who are not familiar with foosball, is every other stick is gonna be yours. So if I'm on this side, this stick and this stick are my team. This stick and this stick are the other player's team. So for me, I like to make them opposite colors just so that when I'm playing, I know which handles to grab. So that's what we are going to do. I have 12 close pins here in front of me, and you can do this with your cardboard if you're making them out of the cardboard as well. I'm gonna color code them, cause why not? So I already have made two, so I'm going to take five and five, and I'm just gonna fast forward this while I do it, but I'm just coloring 
the tops because that's really all you're gonna see anyway. So I'll see you in a bit. is we are going to start putting our players on our arms. I've already semi-completed this just so I could show you, um, but we did alternating arms of blue and orange. But one of the things that I noticed was that you have to make sure that your stick is thick enough to hold the clothespin in place. As you can see with this stick, I'm twisting, 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 and the clothespin isn't moving. So a solution that I came up with real quick is to grab my handy dandy duct tape. For those of you guys who know me, you know I love duct tape. You're gonna take your duct tape, you're gonna cut pieces. If you don't feel comfortable with your teeth, use your scissors. Um, and I'm going to just kind of wrap my stick with a couple layers of duct tape. Make sure that you're doing it in the middle just so that you have enough options for where you wanna put your players. I'm wrapping the whole stick just to add a little bit of thickness. Alright. Alright, let's test it now. Okay. Perfect. Alright. So what you are going to do, make sure that your tape is secure on your stick. What you're gonna do is push the stick through the hole. And what I like to do is kind of stop midway just so that I can pin my pins because you want to pin them upside down so it gets a little tricky once all your players are in your box so I'm just gonna pin them all to the gray and then ah, back it up a little bit and then I'm gonna put it through so now as you can see I'm going to spread my players out to where I think they should fit and I'm kind of sticking with the same theme of my blue starting on this side and my oranges staying on this side. And that's kind of how traditionally the foosball table is anyway. So we're going to stick with that method on this last arm. Just make sure you're spacing them out enough so that they're not hitting the other clothes pins. And then they can spin around. Awesome. All right, so the next step, we're almost done, guys. We are going to be taking our Nerf darts. I borrowed these from my son, so shh, don't tell him. We're gonna have to put them back after. What you wanna do is take your glue, drip a little bit into your Nerf dart, and you're going to push it onto the end all the way to the tip. You're gonna repeat that process until you're completed. Just be very careful, you don't wanna break through. This foam is very soft and delicate, so you wanna make sure that you're being gentle, as with all things. Almost done, halfway there guys. This is our last step. Gotta fight with it. This is so cute, oh my goodness. I'm so excited to play this. For those of you guys who know me, you know that I love competition and I'm like super stoked to have this at home because I am going to compete with my family and I am going to win. So, 
just a little heads up for you guys. The queen is in the building. And like with this one, you gotta be very careful because the sticks can go through. It's a perfect example. I kind of cut it a little bit, but that's okay. It'll only be one hole and you can still play. Finishing up with this second to last stick. All right, and the last one. My go guys. Okay, we are done with that. Now is your chance to kind of fix your players. Um, if you notice that any of your players are loose, I, there's one more, so I'm just gonna duct tape this and then we're gonna play. So now this is what our completed box looks like. Cool. You should be able to move your arms back and forth. Um, if you cannot, again, please try to enlarge your holes for your arms a little bit just so that they can slide back and forth. Um, and then the very last item on your to-do list is to make the score ball or the goal ball. Um, I had marbles, so I was able to use those. Shout out to my son. Um, but if you do not have a ball, I also made a duct tape ball. So again, being thoughtful in this time, please do not use all your duct tape or else you will not be able to fix other things in your house. Um, but you can make this with just a little bit. All you want to do is just start like twisting the ball of duct tape up and then I covered it with um, an actual another piece of duct tape just so it kind of looks smooth. Although I know this is not a ball, it can be used as one. You just want to make sure that it can fit inside the hole of the goal and that it's not too big or too small so that the arms, well you can't really see, the arms can whack it around. The very last step is to drop your ball in and play. In closing, I know that you're home, so it's important to continue to keep your mind and body happy and active. Spending time with your family with a fun competitive activity is one of the best ways to pass time. I hope you enjoyed building your very own mini foosball table, but please share with After School All-Stars your creation. Let us know what materials you use from around your house to complete this project and if there are any tips or suggestions to make this project better. Thanks for watching and being a part of our All-Star Ohana. Please share this video and leave a comment about what you liked and what you want to see next. Now, I'll turn it over to Auntie to share a few words before we sign off. Aloha. <laughs> Oh, Auntie, always get me doing all kind of work, washing dishes. Hey, hey, how are you guys doing? You guys here already? Mom, they're home already. All the all-stars are here already, Mom. Oh, she's always running around doing something, making me wash dishes. But hey, I'm glad you guys stopped by. While Auntie's still away, um, I know you guys got the stay-at-home blues. But hey, just a quick tip from Auntie and Uncle. Make sure that you wash your hands good as often as possible, yeah? So make sure that you always start the warm water, yeah? And then lather your hands with soap. The foamy kind is the best, but any kind you got works good. Make sure you lather it real good. Get all over your hands. And you should wash for 20 seconds. And if you don't know what 20 seconds is like, Sing that song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, look how clean my hands are. Around the wrist and around my thumb. In my fingers, I think I'm done. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, wow, look how clean my hands are. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, just get it a real good rinse. A real good rinse. You can turn off the water. And then dry your hands with a clean towel or some paper towel like we have over here. And that's the safe tip for the day. And hey, I know you guys are feeling blue because you're inside. But you know what? I'm glad you stopped by today. Because if you're feeling blue and you stop by, aren't you glad you stopped by? Okay. Keep coming and checking us out, eh? We got videos for you guys every day, new things coming at you. So make sure that you come check us out. And Auntie, they wanted to say hi. What? Huh? Oh, you cannot do it yourself. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, I gotta go. 
Auntie needs help. Auntie always needs help. Hey, from Uncle Kaipo and Auntie, we love you guys. After School All-Stars Hawaii, stay tuned, man. More stuff coming, okay? We'll talk to you All-Stars later. Oh, we hope. Hold on. Okay, coming, coming, coming.